Hello YouTube, Glenn Anderson here, another video from The Natural Strongman. So today I'm going to talk about uh, one thing that you can do um, in your training that's going to make you stronger. So basically, in a nutshell, uh, one thing you can do is make your training harder. So what do I mean by that? Okay, well basically, um, if you've seen my previous video, I was talking about accumulation and peaking. So let's say you're doing your accumulation phase. Um, there are several ways that you can make your training harder so that when you come to peak your lifts or you come to do a competition it will feel a lot easier and you'll be a lot stronger. So uh, to explain what I mean, um, Eddie Hall would do this and so would Sedrunas and a lot of the top guys. Um, in their training phases uh, they would do things that would make their training harder. For example in the bench press um, Eddie Hall would use a long bar that was eight feet long and very whippy, so it was very unstable to control. But when he went back to bench pressing with a normal bar, it would feel a lot easier and he would be able to push more poundages. Um, I've started doing a similar approach as well. Um, so we've got lots of different bars in our gym. Um, so with a bench press, to make things harder, um, I will use a smooth, crappy bar, uh, which is um, a bit harder to use. You can't press as much on it, and it's a bit more uncomfortable um, than the power bars that we've got. Um, Eddie Hall also uh, pulls his, um, his reps as well, uh, which I've started doing, although I will generally only do it if I'm, do if I'm doing low reps, three or five, I will pause every rep and then press it. If I'm doing um, high reps, like 10 or more, um, I will do them at normal speeds, but then I will pause the last rep and then press it. Uh, so that's one way. Um, another way that I'm gonna make training harder during my accumulation phase, which I'm starting next week, is with the log press. So we've got three different types of logs at our gym. Uh, we've got the big 85 kilo log that's about eight feet long. That's the easiest one to press. But there's also a 47 kilo log and there's a small ladies log that's 34 kilos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 47 log because it's a bit thicker and comes up, but it's a lot shorter as well. And the 47 kilo log is harder to lift and handle than the longer 85 kilo log. The long 85 kilo log, um, although that's difficult to lift at all because it's longer, it's a bit easier. So I'm probably going to spend a lot of my accumulation using the shorter log because it's harder to lift and handle. So that's one way that I can make my log training harder, so that when I come to do log press again in the peaking, I can switch back to the 85 kilo log and hopefully it'll feel a lot easier, and I'll get that 150 log press. Um, with a deadlift, you can make things harder. Instead of using a nice, comfortable deadlift bar, you can use a stiff bar instead. So I'm gonna try and do all my deadlifts on a stiff bar to make deadlifts harder. Uh, with a squat, you can take away knee sleeves. Um, with a belt, just use the belt only when you need it. Um, for warm-up sets on squats and deadlifts, I won't wear a belt. I'll only wear a belt normally for working sets, but you don't want to go for, to the belt too early. So just use the belt only when you need it. For farmer's walks, uh, we've got two different types of farmer's handles at the gym. Uh, you've got the, your, your nice, big, standard farmer's walks with a high pickup, but they've also got some crappy, shitty farmer's walks that have got a low pickup and they're a bit smooth on the handles and all, and they're just shit. So I'm gonna use them on the accumulation phase and just use the crappy farmer's walks. So that in the peaking phase, when I go back and use the big farmer's walks, it'll feel a lot easier. Uh, for the yoke, I mean, we've only got one yoke, but it is a bit unstable, really. One of the pins is missing and the screws don't tighten up. So the yoke we've got on the gym is quite wobbly when you move it and it's unstable, so that's good. And also, if I have yoke in a competition, it'll, in theory, it should feel a lot easier because I'm used to using this rubbish yoke that we've got at the gym. Uh, for rows and pullings, you can use fat grips as well. Uh, so that can make it harder. There's lots of different ways that you can uh, make your training harder. Um, with Atlas Stones, I'll try not to use tacky where I don't have to. And again, try not to use a belt where I don't have to. So making it harder in the accumulation phase. Um, now, I have been asked, well, um, if you do that, that's all well and good, but what you don't want to run into any nasty surprises when you're doing a comp. But that's okay, though, because this is where the peaking comes in. 
I normally like to work in eight week blocks. So I might do eight weeks of accumulation where I'm doing the training, getting the volume in, making it a lot harder on myself. But then I'm gonna do eight weeks of peaking where I'll switch back to start using the equipment. Also with bench press to make it harder as well. Um, don't use um, elbow sleeves and don't use wrist wraps as well. Uh, but when you go into your peaking, you can start introducing them again. So let's say you're bench pressing. When you go back into your peak, you can start wearing your equipment again. You can start wearing elbow sleeves, wrist wraps. Um, you can start using a power bar. You can give your, the, the peaking will give you eight weeks to get used to wearing your equipment again and to making training easier so that when you peak for your comp at the end of it, you'll be ready to go and you'll be used to the equipment. So here you really get the best of both worlds because in the accumulation, you can make it harder really work hard, get all the reps in, but make training a lot harder. And then in the peaking, you can start building up your poundages, using your equipment, really getting used to it. So that, uh, yeah, by the, like I say, by the time you do your, either your peak or your comp, um, if you don't compete, you might just want to max out at the end of this, but you'll, um, you won't have any nasty surprises. You won't have to worry about getting the equipment right because you'd have had eight weeks to get used to it and build up to it. Um, with the log, in the peaking, I'll go back to using the 85 kilo log again. Uh, with the deadlift, I'll use a deadlift bar. Uh, a lot of people use suits and all. I don't use a deadlift suit. I never have. Probably never will. Um, but if you wear a suit with a deadlift or even a squat, you can go back to using them on your peaking bit. If your competition allows it, some do, some don't. Um, the last competition that I did in November, it was a 280 kilo axle deadlift for reps. I got three reps. Uh, so some people got a bit more than that but there were a couple of guys there that were using suits um, oh, and with the squat you can start using your knee sleeves as well with the farmers you can go from the crappy handles and I'll go back to using the bigger high pickup handles um, the yoke I can't really much about because that's going to be the same and obviously for um, all the other stuff just just use a normal handle really so um, this is one way that like I say you can, you can make yourself stronger by just making your training harder like I say a lot of the top strong men have done this um, Eddie Hall does it like I say if you watch him he, he doesn't use elbow sleeves he doesn't use wrist wraps he uses a crap eight foot whippy bar that really goes all over the place so um, Sadrunas is another example I've got Sadrunas's book here and Sadrunas is really a big advocate for this he says here to and quote your training must be a lot harder than your competition and he says except for the days i do bodybuilding style training and cardio i normally train in a space that is very uncomfortable very cold and very austere i have no carpet no special floor no nice machines no heating no padding no air conditioning no music no cell phone no tv and no company in this way training turns into a very difficult chore i still give it my best and go as hard as i possibly can Therefore, when I'm in my competition, surrounded by cheering crowds, rallying music and warm sunny weather, I can achieve my absolute best. This is why I've been able to take amazing leaps in terms of heavy lifting during competition. Of course, it's not easy to train like this. In fact, it's extremely difficult. This is why a lot of people don't want to do it. They feel they have no motivation, no desire to push to the limit. As a consequence, they never opt to train like this. But this is a mistake. If you do not train like this, you will not achieve your ball potential and won't perform as well as you could do in a competition. So uh, that's from the man himself, Big Z. So uh, the take away in this video, try and make training harder when you can, especially in the um, off season or the accumulation phase where you're working on skill and all that. Like I say, this is what I'm gonna do when I start my accumulation. So uh, if you wanna follow along uh, in my training, I'm gonna start uploading the videos uh, next week. Monday the 9th should be my first training session where I'm going to be doing log press and incline press and various other pressing movements. So I'll be uploading that for you to watch. And then, of course, when I go back into peaking, I'll start using the better bars again. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video now. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you soon for the next video.